Bud Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago, in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Tonight's episode, Murder by the Dead. I got something to say. Very well, be brief. Oh, I'll be brief, all right. You think you're gonna kill me, but you ain't. I'll get you, yes, you up on the bench there, and I'll get that district attorney, too. And just for good luck, I'll get the foreman of that crooked jury that railroaded me. Do you understand? Perfectly. Your threats against the district attorney and the foreman of the jury will, I am sure, go as unnoticed as your threat against Peter Swift, I hereby sentence you to be taken from here to the place from whence you came, and that there you be executed in the manner provided by the law. And may God have mercy on your soul. Uh, you will hang me, will you, you old fool? I'll get you, all three. And if I can't get you living, I'll get you dead. Your father, wasn't it, Margaret? Your father is the third on the list to die. Now you understand. Oh, but my dear Scott, you surely don't intend to suggest it. But I, I mean, Peter Swift. And all I know is that three men were threatened, and one of them is dead. A coincidence, of course. Well, perhaps. But I know you'll think I'm a fool, Lamont, but, and, and, and I don't know how, but perhaps Peter Swift has come back. Peter Swift was executed. But there is something in what you say. I wonder now. Uh, so we're asked to believe that Peter Swift has come back from the land of shades to kill three men. Three were threatened. One is dead. Murdered. The killer must be sent to the coast. Well, I suppose there's only one thing that can be opposed to the shade. And that is?
Mm. Yeah, where's Peter Swift? Chimney. It gives economical as well as healthful heat. 
Blue Coal is mined by the Glen Alden Coal Company, the world's largest producers of Pennsylvania anthracite. It is laboratory tested at the mines for purity and for uniformity of size. If you have never tried Blue Coal, place a trial order tomorrow. You'll find the name of your nearest Blue Coal dealer listed in the Where to Buy It section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. Hey, uh, sweet. Uh, what do you mean, sweet? What do you mean by sweet? JG, J Grant Peace? Grant Peace. What do you mean by sweet? You mean this, you mean this king? This king of kings? I don't want. I don't know what you mean by sweet. The character. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, the character. Uh, the character is the king. Uh, he is a king of a small island. Uh, of Clamere. Uh, he is kind of his. He's kind of. Noble with kind of a jackass kind of ideal. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. So he's a... Uh, he's a king that's lost his wife that uh, married... Uh, married back into her family. Uh, yeah, he... He was a, a small warrior, uh, mostly general, never really fought met too many battles. Uh, instead, there was a small war between the two sisters' islands, and um, a marriage was formed to, uh, to, st uh, to create the ceasefire. So that's uh that's a uh, he's he's not a big character I would say but he's still important to the story. So he's 
He's very much a, a fun little character that I made up for the campaign. And thank you for coming in. I do appreciate it. You can't shoot the shadow. Chicken explosion? Oh my god. Oh. oh my goodness. Thank you, Raiders, for coming in, saying hey, I appreciate it. I'm just working on some D D assets. I've got I'm just cleaning him up. He didn't look right, so I'm cleaning him up. Cleaning all these people up. Chimkins. I love chickens. I love chickens, Eddie. I love chickens, Eddie. I do appreciate everybody coming in saying hey. Good morning. His genius. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm just trying to clean him up. He didn't look right. He looked very, very much a not great. I'm heading off to bed, but glad to see you on the Raider side. For a change along. Uh, I know, right? It's so nice. I appreciate everybody uh, coming in to just say hi. I, lo I love just seeing people and saying hey. So mad. He's genius. I'm listening to the shadow, by the way. Old radio shows, because Inquisitor Price sent me over to these, and I was like, oh man, I like these. Golden Age, my friend, Golden Age. Yep, Golden Age of, of uh, radio shows. And thank you, Days Dies. I appreciate the follow. Right? Just remember to buy your blue coal. Remember, it's sponsored by Blue Coal Energy. If you're not feeling warm this summer... Buy some blue coal. You not, are you not hot enough this summer? Here's some blue coal. Do you uh, not have enough energy in your home? Here's some blue coal. <laughs> Goodness. Ah. Goodness gracious. George and Gracie are my fave, by the way. Okay. Hey. Oh, no, 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 no. It's the first few shows of The Shadow are literally sponsored by Blue Coal. 
So every few minutes you hear a commercial for blue coal. Remember this winter, get your blue coal. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's how commercials used to fucking be. It's crazy. I love it. It is definitely uh, an outdated uh, brand. I don't know what it's called. Uh, no, but I think it's made in, uh, Philadelphia, so. Oh, no. Right? It's gotta be trendy now. It's like, oh, yeah, commercials used to just... Tell you about the fucking product and be done with it. And then they're like, oh yes, and now watch this great, great radio show. Also, it's good to know that uh, the Shadow is a psychic. Uh, He is psychically tricking this man. To get into a car crash. I'm a doctor. (laughs) I love that. You can hear the computer in the background. Oh my goodness. Right? What is this commercial about? Uniqueness. This is about the future and how we can change it for the better. Razor. What? Just remember, you can get a clean shave. Also, buy Coca Cola. Think about those long mountainous ranges and whatnot, those beautiful peaks and whatnot. Mountain Dew. (laughs) Guys, the shadow made the man crash his car. I don't know. Sounds like a hero to me. <laughs> Pepsi, just for you. <laughs> that I didn't know. That's actually a, a fact I did not know. Oh, get ready. Guys. Living room, your dining room, your kitchen, anywhere at all. 
this thermostat is then installed to a silent uh, connect to a, a silent my goodness in the basement near the furnace what easy to install by is it yes the installation of the blue cold heat regulator is such a simple matter that it required but an hour or two in fact you don't even have to let the fire in your furnace go out and the charge for installation is very low very low Whoa. Now that is a steal. You'll find he's the outstanding heating authority in your community. And take advantage of his John Barkley trained serviceman, who is qualified to give you expert counsel on any heating problem at no charge, whatever. I thank you. Guys, John Barkley's blue coal. Up. What's up with the fucking laugh track? Oh yeah. Extra. Alright, alright, I got you. Our cast tonight has included Dwight Weist, Margot Stevenson, Polly Bear, Jackson Beck, Arnold Moss, Sidney Sloan. Oh, goodness. But remember, guys, get your blue coal here. Just go to your phone provider, and it's as low as $5 for installation for blue coal <laughs> with a thermostat. This is your announcer, Ken Roberts, who joins with the cast in extending our appreciation to the creator of the shadow, Mr. Walter Gibson. Oh, shit. It was made to make moonshine better? Wow, I gotta say... I mean, for insta for heating uh, insulation nowadays, I would say five dollars is a f is a steal. Shadow knows. Pennsylvania. Sorry. Club Caliph. Does that intrigue you? Lovely, but not too late. I have an appointment at 10 in the morning at the woman's club. 
They're trying to get some action on this terrible narcotic situation. Oh, yes, I read about that. Oh, the stuff's being peddled all over town. They found school children using it, society women. Why, it's already caused a half dozen suicides. Yes, I know. It's terrible stuff. Oh, it needs the shadow to get at the bottom of it. Yes, I know, dear, but for tonight, I, I do enjoy just being myself. The Mount Cranston dilettante. Let's be the shadow only in real emergency. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they tell me there's a lovely Indian dancer at this new club, Caleb. Indian dancer? Mm-hmm. You know, there's the place just there. Club Caleb, driver. Yes, sir. Lamont, you are going to do something about it. You've started already. Perhaps. Well, here we are. All right, driver. There you are. Thank you, sir. Oh, that looks like young Jerry Gleason just going in. Yes? Well, if that young man's father, I'd spank him and keep him home occasionally. Well, son of a wealthy sire. Mm. Yeah, let me have your coat. I'll check it with mine. Good evening, Jerry. Oh, oh hello, Miss Lane. Your father and sister, well, I haven't seen them lately. Mm. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, but I can't wait right now. I've got to see someone, and it's important. I'm sorry. But, Jerry... Hello. What are you, young please? I don't know. He seems awfully upset about something. He doesn't look well, either. Pale and shaky. You're right, he doesn't. Oh, no. Well, let's go in. The Dance of the Cobra. This is very... Now that's a lot better. Why, it's young Jerry Gleason. She handed him something. Good Lord. He's going out with her. What's the matter? It just struck me, Margo. That boy's face. The color of his skin. You mean drugs? Yes. The poppy of India. Oh, but not Jerry Gleason. Oh, that'd be too awful. And our own friend, Pierre Gleason, his aunt, who's tried so hard to steer him straight since his mother died, it would just about kill her. Come, Margo. We must do something. We're going to. I did come here tonight with a vague idea that this Indian dancer might have some connection with the thing. With her veiled threats and Jerry's interest in her, I'm pretty sure now. What are you going to do? I think the shadow will pay a call on Sadi Belada. 
in her dressing room. I think the shadow can strike back. Little birdie, Paula Dino. Oh my goodness, Seven Raiders. Hello. We're just listening to the shadow while doing some art. Hey, oh. How's everybody doing? Old radio show. During the day. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. We sail tomorrow night at eight. I am not afraid of the police. Oh, no. But I hope you guys enjoy yourselves. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. I'm drawing a king right now. I hope he looks kingly. I think he does. Also... Right next to him is Baba Yaga. So watch out. Watch out for Baba Yaga, everybody. She might get you. And I do appreciate everybody for staying for just a little bit. I understand. Everybody's got very kingly, yes. I don't want to have two. Yeah, the chicken leg lady. Yeah, there she is. Doesn't she look so pretty? Yeah, he's got a quite the mane. He is quite the mane. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I hope you guys enjoy yourselves, and I hope you guys enjoyed the stay. I appreciate it, and thank you so much again, Starbit Bunny. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. You command the temple bells of Nabon, do you? Yes. Either you oh, no. or you desecrate a great gift. Put your strength against mine, White Ifandi, and you will see how I desecrate that gift. I can cast your little spells aside and make them nothing. I can kill you. Kill me. The shadow, Sadi? Yes. If you dare to come to me again, will you come? Who could refuse such an invitation? Especially when made by oh, my goodness. a lady of yourself. <laughs> yes, I will come. And be sure you don't mistake my voice when I do come. <laughs> this laugh gets weirder and weirder every episode. <laughs> Just watch out for the shadow. Well, what is it, Sergeant? Uh, excuse me, Commissioner. Old man Gleason is outside and insists he's got to see you. Gleason, you mean Andrew Gleason? Sure, the big Wall Street bank, a friend of the mayor. Shall I let him come in? Oh, All this name deficiency where it doesn't do any good. I want to see you, Commissioner. All right, Mr. Gleason. What the devil is this town coming to? Well, if you'll tell me what you're getting at. My I... boy is what I'm getting at. He's lying home there with the worst case of delirium tremens I ever saw. Spent the night sopping up liquor in these rotten hunky tonks. Mr. Gleason, if you think the police department's going around playing wet nurse to all the spoiled kids in this town, it... Is this what you came to see me about, Mr. Gleason? It certainly is. Well, I happen to have more important things on my mind right now. Then you better get this on your mind. Because if you don't, I'll see to it that there's somebody here who does. And I can do it. Good day. Well, seems 
like this was a busy day, sir. What with uh, drunken college boys and millionaires. This is another of those, uh, Commissioner Weston speaking. <laughs> Why, you, you... Don't lose your patience, Commissioner. The shadow has information that may help you. Young Jerry Gleason is becoming a drug addict. What? Yes. A victim of this flood of drugs being peddled on our... Guys. It might cost just, you Just watch out for them drugs. You got to watch out for the bad drugs, not the good drugs. You're, you know, you got to be okay with those good drugs, but those bad drugs. Ladies and gentlemen, while we're waiting for the shadow to those poor rich, rich kids will get addicted immediately. Oh. Mm -hmm. I will. <laughs> all day long. Oh. I. Hey. Don't take chances, guys. My goodness. You heard him. You better get that blue coal. Not, not any other. Not any other. You gotta get the anthro anthrocyte or whatever it's called. Fuck. I don't even know what it's called. Just a light, just a light opacity. Get that light opacity. Drug 
traffic. Is your reason safe? Yes, his father made him go to bed. They thought he'd been drinking too much. Well, mm. guess it's time I got busy. Have you found out anything else? One or two things. In Sade Delata's dressing room, I found a note signed by Captain Marlin of the freighter Alborek Castle. I think there's some connection there. I'm going to find out. First, though, I'm going to the zoo. The zoo? Yes. Yes. Yes, I want to borrow a decorative little reptile from my friend the curator. He's usually very obliging. Open that door. Look. Hanging from the door now. Snake. Don't touch it. It's all right. It's a dead one. It's a note with it. So, she's not bluffing. She does know who I am. Oh, Lamont, I, I'm frightened for you. What does it say? It says, dead cobras are better playthings than live ones. Oh. Was I mistaken? Then it's not a bad Oh, Lamont, I... Margo, it's a challenge. But the bell, the bells of Nibon. Oh, I'm afraid the shadow this time will get beyond his We shall see, Margo. I shall see who is stronger. Sadi and the bells of Nabon. Or the shadow. Or the shadow. Pretty, pretty lion man. He's very handsome. Yes, you see, very handsome. Yep, that's drug dealers. They've got magic powers. They're gonna trick you into doing them drugs. You better watch out. Very commanding. Yeah, yeah, jump, jump through the window. Oh. Poor Jerry. Oh, yeah. Depressing here in this cabin, Citadel. Hey, Lizzie. Why do you tremble so, Annette? I wish we were far at sea, on our way to Rio. Oh, be patient. There are some notes for to leave us to Papa G. Yes. What was that? There is nothing. Oh, it's you, Captain Hare. We are leaving, Captain. Yes, we're getting underway now. We've got the boys stowed safely below, below decks. And the rest of the medicine? Oh, uh, we got rid of that. What was left of it. A nice clean-up for all hands, not counting this Gleason job. That'll net us another hundred thousand, or nothing. Well, we're fixed whichever way the dice roll. And after that, we live like kings, without a care, yes? Yeah? Not even a conscience. 
Don't bother you. What? Sabi. He has come. I was afraid. Who said that? I did, Captain. Shit. So you're the one with your trick ghost talk and magic, eh? I'll make a shadow out of you soon enough. Not that way, Captain. No? Yes. Lock that door, Max. It is locked, Captain Mullin. But but the portholes. No one can get through those. Not even a shadow. <laughs> Save your laugh, whoever you are. We've got you. You're in this cabin somewhere. And this ship is outward bound. Yep. I think you may have made three mistakes, Captain. One too many. Yes. Yes, Captain. But I do not make mistakes, Dad. That remains to be seen, Sade Bellada. Then you will see. And me the wicker basket, the legs. Hey, what are you going to do? Yes, Sade. I call the temple bells of Niban, Captain. The shadow has the power to blind your eyes. A trick he learned in India from a yogi who was my uncle. But I have a better trick. When the last bell sounds while the sacred cobra dances, you will see the shadow only as a man. Be ready to shoot, Captain. I'm ready. And now, my cobra... To dance with the bells of Niba. I wouldn't open that basket if I were you, Sadi Bellada. You watch my pretty cobra, son. He may find you even before the captain's bullet. You will die just as quickly. <laughs> Dead cobras are better playthings than live ones. Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim. Make your small prayer, sad. And now, my pretty one, begin to dance. Be careful, Sadie Bell. The cobra moves towards you. My own pretty cobra. He knows me. Oh, no. Yeah. When the last bell strikes, we shall see our prisoner. And I am waiting for that minute. But Sadi, the cobra, look out, he's going to strike. Alexis, stop it. Go. Quick, stop the last bell for Alexis. Come here. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. No. Sadi should have known it was not her cobra in the wicker basket. It was mine. Oh, shit. My goodness. The shadow had him taken care of. This time the police were too smart for you. Oh, decidedly. Huh? Mm. Thanks for coming, Commissioner. You were very helpful. <laughs> oh, there's a chicken. Chick, 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 chick. Oh, that's a cute emote, though. Let's see, whose emote is that? Oh. What you have just heard is copyrighted by the Shadow Magazine. The characters in this story are entirely fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Chickies. Ah, oh, you play Borderlands, I see. You play that Borderlands, I see. Oh, I know. So cute.
Oh yeah. Borderlands 3, I I stopped playing after Borderlands uh, 2, so it's probably good. What would you give it out of what would you give it out of 10? Shadow knows. Because I thought two was pretty good. Blue Cold presents the Shadow, the man of mystery who strikes terror in the very souls of jobsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Friends, there's no longer any need for you to rely on guesswork when it comes to buying fuel. Now you can get the best fuel for home use, and know it at a glance, too. For blue coal, the finest of Pennsylvania mm. hard coal, is colored a harmless blue at the mines for your protection. Right. So that you can identify it instantly. To be sure that the fuel you buy is a safe, healthy, economical fuel, get America's finest anthracite. Ask for blue coal by name. Order your supply tomorrow. Okay, so story-wise, not that great, but uh, pretty much a pretty good story. Okay, alright. Good gameplay, solid first-person shooter, not bad multiplayer, okay. That's really what I expect from uh, Borderlands. I didn't really care for the pre-sequel either. But I, I don't know why I didn't like it. Like, there was no, like, glaring feature I didn't like. Alright. I might have to skip this one. I'll skip this one. This is a bit of a, a ringing in the audio from the last one, so I had to skip that. It's so sad. Yeah, I'm doing it all on tablet. It's an all-in-one S7 tablet. It works. It just works. I mean, it's not, it's not incredible. Yep. I hate them. And I'll show them. 
I'll show the shadow fella too. I'll fool all of them. And except you Yes. This is all for Dungeons and Dragons. So this is this is all for my Dungeons and Dragons campaign. I've got I've got a bunch of other stuff for D and D. It's all on my Instagram. That's uh, basically their crew, and uh, some villains. The Night of Corn. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I almost forgot. Yeah, I'm working on the Platinum Knight. This is the Platinum Warrior. He's a he's a cool guy with a unicorn as a helmet. Which uh, when you want a unicorn as a helmet, thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh man, I've been, I've got to say, I'm going to say this, I've said it multiple times, if you want to draw like this, I didn't draw like this originally, if you want to draw like this, you put your heart to it, and you, and you keep trying, if it's something you really want to do, Hold up. I, I, I want to hear this commercial, but I do want to say this. Every time I, I get to a moment like this, I want to say it. If you want to draw like this, if you want to draw, get better at drawing and be able to draw stuff like this, practice makes perfect. Keep practicing. Keep putting yourself out there. Even if it's difficult, even if it's hard. If you want to draw like this, I'll say it. Anybody could draw like this. You just got to put in the time and effort. Yep. Exactly. I just want to say this to everybody that's viewing, just anybody that comes in. You can do this. It's not some special gift that I have. It's not something that I just randomly woke up with uh, one day. I wasn't like Spider Man. You've got if you want to put if you want to draw stuff like this. If you want to uh, be an artist like this, all it takes is one step. All it takes is a lot of work and uh, and heart and something you really genuinely enjoy. Hell, I remember I used to I used to copy the pictures off Garfield books. That's how I learned how to draw was Garfield books. So don't don't feel like you can't do it. Don't feel like you can't uh you could never do it. I know a lot of people every time I say this they're like, "Oh, no, I couldn't." It's like, "Well, you've already set yourself up for failure." You've already set yourself up for for not doing it. You've already made it. You've already made sure that you're never going to be an artist. You got to put yourself out there and Yeah. And you know Shia LaBeouf, you know, he 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 states in that uh that that talk, you know, 
You gotta do it. You gotta be... You gotta put yourself out there. I I don't feel comfortable streaming. I don't feel comfortable uh, putting out my art. I feel it's never good enough. But as far as I've been told multiple times, no, your art's really good. You gotta do it. You gotta put yourself out there. You gotta... And I believe in you. And you know what? If you're... If you ever are unsure of yourself, you can always send me a link of like, hey, what do I need to do? And show me some of your, some of your art and I'll try to help out as best as I can. Because the, the more artists that are out there, the more competition there is. And when there's more competition, it creates better artists. It creates better works of art. It's when you have no competition, when you have no one uh, fighting back, you, you get lazy, you get boring. So that's why I, I always say, if you want to become an artist, I want to see it. I want to see what you, you dreamed up, you put up together. I'm ready for it. I would love to see it. So I believe in you and you should too. Never put yourself down. And if you feel, and it's good to wish uh, I want to be an artist, well, you know what? You can do it. I believe in you. It's, that's all I wanted to say. I, I, I think that anybody can become an artist if they put their mind to it. So, you know, I believe in you. Day, days dies, I believe in you. If nobody else does, I do. The last thing that comes to mind. Naturally, you don't want to jeopardize the health and comfort of your family. But did you know that you can actually have better heat for less money simply by burning blue coal? Here's why. Thank you, Dazed. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. But remember, the cost of anthracite is not. No wonder thousands of homeowners are switching back to anthracite. No wonder anthracite is a fuel that is used for cooking purposes on the nation's cracked passenger trains. Mm -hmm. It has all kinds of fuel and found that anthracite is far more economical because it burns long, steadily, evenly with minimum drafts and less attention. Mm -hmm. Now the cream of all Pennsylvania anthracite is blue coal. It comes from the mines of the famous Glen Alden Coal Company. It's tested and retested for purity and uniform sizing. Blue coal is prepared especially for home use, and it comes in all domestic sizes. Oh, yeah. Stove, chestnut, and beef. Oof. If you want clean, even dependable heat at lowest cost, always order blue coal. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. Uh, You'll find his name listed in the where to buy it section of your classified... Dazed eyes, get... Uh, under the name blue coal. Yep, get that blue coal. Don't, don't forget it now. You gotta get that blue coal... It's on passenger trains. It's so popular. It's not like everybody uses gas or anything like that. Blue coal. Alright. I know. The way people are flocked here on the chance of seeing somebody else blown to bits by this maniac. Looks like the shadow is right. The way they've been swarming through this arcade. Yeah, and watching each other like a bunch of wild animals. You see what happened to that poor guy with the Christmas box? Mm. They nearly killed him before we got him out. All he had was a doll for his kid. I saw it. Well, the time's up, Commissioner. Yes. Thank heavens. Any orders, sir? Just keep the men on duty till this crowd thins out. They'll be going home now. Commissioner, Commissioner Weston, look. What is it? The maniac. He's been here. Look at this piece of paper. Where'd you get it? In the arcade. He must have dropped it. Oh, what's it say, Commissioner? Tell that shadow fellow I'll kill me a lot more people at 11 o'clock tonight. Oh. I found the maniac. Thank heaven. Have you notified the police? 
It's another version of anthracite. Goodbye, my dear. But I think he should be done for right now. I think the king is very much done at this point. That means that I get to go use the restroom. BRB. Have to pee. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Hold up. Watchman down on the new subway they're building. Huh? Yes, yes, that's it. <laughs> I go down them steps. Every night I go down them steps and watch. Well, why did you say so? Get on with you. Get to your watching. Thank you. <laughs> Joe Tonetti is waiting for me so he can go home. Every night at 10.30 I take from him the job of watching. <laughs> now that's a job I wouldn't want any part of. Me either. I'll pound my beer. Joey, you can go home now. I'm here to watch. Hey, what's the matter? Your house will be to speak about clearly. You're five minutes late. I want to go home. Here's the keys to everything now. You watch out. You don't you go to sleep. <laughs> the police don't want to let me come to work. But I show them the badge. <laughs> you can go home now, Joey. I'll, I'll watch everything. Okay. See you in the morning. Goodbye. Goodbye. Them good. I'll kill him. That shadow fella, I'll show him too. <laughs> now, now, now I, I'm alone. <laughs> All alone. Not quite, Anton Spivak. You are not quite alone. I am with you. Huh? Do you hear my voice, Anton? Uh, sure, sure. I, I always hear voices in the dark, on the street, and, and here under the street where I watch every night. Yes, Anton. different about your voice it's the voice of the shadow oh <laughs> you're a pretty smart voice <laughs> how'd you find me where's that shadow fella the newspapers talk about i am more than just a voice anton spivak i am the shadow you you're the shadow yes where are you hiding i am hiding under the cloak of invisibility not see me because I have clouded your mind so you cannot see that which is here how did you get down here in this subway excavation I followed you down the steps mm. how'd you know where to find me I picked you out of the crowd in the central arcade <sighs> oh my goodness. Stinky gl Yeah, not stinky. I wash my hands. Oh no. Welcome back. Oh, it's glad I'm glad to be back. Alright. Now I need to work on this motherfucker. This mofo.
No, 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 you have to go. Yes, I'm smart. But you're smarter. <laughs> Isn't it bad? Let me stay. I want to learn. You can teach me things. Then maybe we can work together. You hate people too? Yes. I hate crowds. Let me watch you. Let you watch. What are you going to do? <laughs> you, you just watch. What's in the shed? You see? Dynamite. Sticks and sticks of dynamite. Is this what you use to kill people with? Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> My precious dynamite. They kill the crowds I hate, see? <laughs> now look here. Here's a stick of dynamite all, all ready for fuse. There's one, two, three, four, five. And six, six sticks of dynamite to go with it. <laughs> now you watch. See, Shadow, I, I, I tie them in a bundle. But how do you take that dynamite to the place where you killed all those people? It's a block away. How do you carry it? <laughs> that, that's where I'm smarter than you, Mr. Shadow. Show me. <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs> now, look, look, see, it, it's almost 11 o'clock. Now, here, here. You, you see this little hook? I hooked the dynamite to it. Then what, Anton? Wait, wait, you, you, you hear that car overhead on the boards? Yes. Well, if, if the light is red, it will stop right over our heads. Now, now, now listen. There, there, you see? The light is red. Now, now, now I take this crowbar. I go up this ladder. Come on, come on, you come with me. Yes, I am still here. Although you cannot see me. Now, now you watch. I pry the end of this plank back, you see? And I, I, I hook the dynamite on the brake rod. I strike a match, and, and I light the fuse. And, and, when, and when, when, when the light changes, the car takes the dynamite with it, and when the dynamite explodes a block away, I'm still here, while the... Oh, no, 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 you, you put out the fuse. You've tricked me. And here is the dynamite. Oh, we took it off the car. It's gone without the dynamite. And I promised I'd kill a lot of people tonight. Now I have to wait. Tomorrow the crowds will be still pushing me. Scaring me. You tricked me. That's what you did. You, you tricked me. Where are you, Shadow? Shadow. Come here, Shadow. Nice, Shadow. Nice, Shadow. Yes, yes, I, I hear you. <laughs> nice, nice, Shadow. <laughs> come, c come close to me. Put down that dynamite, Anton. No, no, Shadow. I light another match. If you touch that match to the fuse, you'll die, too. But I'll kill you, and I don't care. You wouldn't let me kill people, and I don't want to live. I want to die. I want you to die too, Shadow. Wait, Anton. No, 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 you blow up my man. Yes, I have a plan. Those thousands of people waiting up the street. Yes? yes? You can kill all those people. Wouldn't that be better than just killing the two of us? <laughs> how, how, how? Tell me Take how. Take your dynamite and come with me. No, 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 there's, there's, there's policemen out there, I saw them. But they won't see you any more than you can see me. No, 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 they will see me. Hypnotize them. Huh? Hypnotize them. Look straight at them. Stare at them. And then they won't be able to see you. No, 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 I... Try. <laughs> All those people waiting to be killed. <laughs> I'll try it. But, but don't you leave me, Shadow, or I'll light the fuse. I'm here, Anton Spivak. Look, there are the two policemen. Uh -huh. Just stare at them hard as you pass, huh? and they won't see you. All right, I'll, I'll try, I'll try. Like a false alarm this time. Hey, wait a minute. Here's 
that night watchman. Yeah, what's the matter with him? What's he staring at? Look. Look what he's carrying. You can't see me. You can't see me. Dynamite. Grab him. Oh, no, no. Take it away from me. Let me go. Hold it. No, I said no. Yeah, I no. got him. It's a match. No, no, no. Oh, he, he lied. He fooled me. He said you couldn't see me. Oh, no, no. Give me my dynamite. I want to kill all those people. Hold him. No. This sounds like a prominent actor that I've heard in Looney Tunes. Oh, no, no, he, he, he tricked me. He, he said you couldn't see me. Where'd he come from? I'm out of subway excavation, Commissioner. He's a night watchman. No, no, he, he tricked me. The, the shadow tricked me. Oh. John Barkley. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Barkley. Friends, there are just two more days left in November. That means that homeowners have only two more days in which to phone their blue coal dealers and mm -hmm. get full details on how they may have a blue coal heat regulator installed in their homes for a free trial period of two weeks. To me, this is the most unusual offer ever made. The free use of a blue coal heat regulator for two whole weeks without any obligation on your part to buy. Believe me, friends, until you've used one of these marvelous thermostats, you don't know what real comfort is. I don't. Keeping your home warm and cozy from morning till night mm. without one having to make a trip down to the furnace. Ugh. Oh. You'll find you burn far less coal with this regulator, too. Oh, my goodness. Don't my word for it. See for yourself. Own your blue coal dealer tomorrow. I shall. Friends, for your own sake, do as Mr. Barclay suggests. Own your blue coal dealer tomorrow. And get full details of this amazing free trial offer. Prove to yourself what thousands of satisfied owners already know that with a blue coal heat regulator, you get more uniform heat. Oh, well. Heat I hope everybody's having a good day, by the way. Phone your blue coal dealer tomorrow. I don't know if I said that just yet. I do hope everybody's having a great day. The characters in this story are entirely fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. It doesn't. The shadow knows. <laughs> The shadow knows. The shadow knows. Oh, well, yeah. Blue Coal presents The Shadow, the mystery man who strikes terror in the very hearts of shopkeepers, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today's The Death Triangle. The Death Triangle? Oh, man. <laughs> oh. They're just wearing it on their shoulders. Right. If anybody knows what Pennsylvania is, never heard of it. Specify blue coal. I will. Man. I really need to get some blue coal for my rented house. On this day, September 22nd, 1913, by order of 
December 12, 1937. The shadow has been found. Dr. James Evans, world-famous child surgeon, told reporters this afternoon that a wounded man who claimed to be the shadow forced his way into Dr. Evans' private clinic and at the point of a gun forced him to remove a bullet. The wounded man then revealed that he was none other than that mysterious character who has waged a one-man war against crime, the shadow. Before Dr. Evans could report the case to the police, however, the shadow mysteriously disappears. The famous surgeon believes the shadow has little chance of surviving his wounds. Our organ recital now continues. <laughs> oh yeah, vigilante, uh, probably going to die. Uh, we're just, uh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna say it during this uh, organ program. I will help. But only because your life is in danger, Doctor. The world can ill afford to lose the skill and genius to save the lives of countless children. You overestimate my important shadow, but will you help? Yes. What? A pediatrician is definitely someone we need to save. 100%. Chicken. Stop it. I already had breakfast. It's making me hungry. <laughs> mm. 
Give me that milk chicken, magic chicken, and the cookies. And the cookies. Mm, yes, give me the cookies. If you can eat, I assume you are eating. Go, go eat, for I am hungies. I'm just being fat over here. I can't... I've got to get almond milk. I'm lactose intolerant now. I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> I know. I know. F in chat. Lactose. Uh, I've got to drink. Almond milk now. Ooh. It's just not. It's just not the same. Okay, miss. Follow that big black limousine, the one with the green cross on the license plate. That's the doctor's car, miss. I may have to break a lot of traffic laws if it goes through red lights. Never mind, I'll pay the fine. Don't lose sight of that car for a minute. Okay, lady. But this is going to be one fast ride. My goodness. I realized it about three weeks ago that I'm lactose intolerant, and uh, I don't like it. I've had to cut out cheese out of my life. Hey, thanks, man. Thank you. It, it's a very difficult life. Get in the car, Margo. Get in the car. Hoping the real shadow would get in touch with me. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm coming here tonight. 
to help us. I have always been curious to see this shadow. You won't see him. No man has ever seen him, but he'll be here. Oh, Evans, for a man of intelligence, you're talking like a fool. And I love ghosts and mystic presences. You're wrong, Gabriel. You're wrong. Because I am a doctor, I can readily accept the fact that the shadow is a master of the powers of mental projection, of mass hypnosis. Recent experiments have proven conclusively that. Uh, rubbish. Conclusively. It, it was the shadow. Dazed eyes, it was the shadow, of course. It was the last day we spent in the open boat in which we escaped from Devil's Island 20 years ago. Storms had blown us off our course. Our food was gone. Our water was exhausted. Covey, the only one who knew how to navigate, was... Well, he was slowly dying from hunger and thirst. Oh, they did a nice fade in. That was a nice fade in. It was the shadow, of course. You've been drinking my share. Give me that bucket. Give me a drink of that bucket. What does it matter, Dr. Evans? 17 days in this open boat. Nights of storm and days of blazing heat. Water. Water. I'm dying, I tell you. Dying. You're not giving me my The shadow knows. Oh, never mind. Here's the decanter. I'll pour it myself. 
Oh no! Ladies and gentlemen, the shadow will return in a moment. Mm. There are thousands of families living around snowbound Buffalo today who are as snug as a bug in a rug thanks to blue coal. Oh. You have read how the whole city of Buffalo has been literally snowed in. In that entire area, business practically came to a standstill for several days. But those families who laid in their supply of blue coal kept comfortable. The icy yeah, those idiots that didn't get the blue call. <laughs> so take a tip and get ready. Put in a supply of blue coal yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> it's the most economical fuel that you can use. Furnaces, parlor stoves, and cooking ranges in New England were designed to use anthracite. And blue coal is America's finest anthracite. Blue coal is mined by the Glen Alden Coal Company and is especially prepared for home use. It is available in all domestic sizes, eggs, stoves, chestnut, and peas. Every carload of blue coal is laboratory tested for purity and sizing before shipment from the mine. Blue coal burns steadily and evenly, sending a full supply of heat to the living quarters of your home, even in the most severe weather. Get set for winter tomorrow by ordering blue coal. You will find the name of your nearest blue coal dealer in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. Blue Coal. Gabriel, wake up. I have come for you. <laughs> so you've come, Kove. Oh, you poor deluded fool. Do you think I let you kill me in my sleep? I've been awake, waiting here in the dark for you to come. <laughs> a little light helps. <laughs> so you've grown a beard since I saw you last cafe. And your hair is gray. That gun in your hand won't save you, Dubriel. If I die, I will take you with me. Listen, Cove. I didn't see your food in the open boat. I swear it. No? You also betrayed me to the police. You told them where to find me. And I am not the only one you betrayed, am I, Dubriel? You betrayed Martin the time he tried to escape alone, didn't you, Dubriel? Yes, yes, but what do you care, Corvée? He wouldn't take me with him, but I did not betray you. Have you paid Martin for those hundred lashes and those hundred days of bread and water he got because you betrayed him? Oh, he doesn't know. He will never know it was I. Dubriel, you remember how we passed the long days in that open boat, throwing knives? Don't raise that knife, Corvée. We got so good, we seldom miss. I was sure that you moved. But Martin was the best. You may shoot me to real, but my knife won't miss. Go away. Wait a minute, Kobe. I will make a deal with you. Listen, Kobe. You are out to get Evans and Martin, too. If you throw that knife, I'll shoot you, and you will never get them. You would help me kill Evans. I know he's here in the house. Yes, 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 sir. I hate Evans and Martin, too. I will help you get them. <laughs> so, you would betray Dr. Evans to save yourself to real. Shut up. Kobe, don't be afraid. He's only a man. By some trick, he can make himself invisible, but he's flesh and blood. Quick, lock the door. We'll deal with him first. He won't get out. Now, now, Shadow, what can you do to stop us? Speak up. I dare you to speak. Listen where his voice comes from, you will. Then shoot quickly. No, no, no. The shot would bring Evans and Martin. Throw your knife, Corvée. Make him speak. I won't miss. Speak up, Shadow. 
We will find you anyway. You can't get out. I am here in the corner. In the far corner. Throw your knife over here. Hey, buddy. Oh, you missed what he was there. No. Only my voice was there. He's there in front of you, the real shoot, shoot. <laughs> yes, I will shoot now. Yes, I will shoot. But not the shadow. He came here to help us catch you, Kobe. And he has your knife. It's gone. Now, Kobe, you are helpless. And now I'll deal with you. You treacherous dick. You fool. You think I carry only one knife? This one is for you. Oh. oh you devil. You but devil, Corvey. Take you with me, Corvey. Come here. Come here. Come here. Open the door. Come here. Come here. Come here. Real is dead, Dr. Evans. Dead? Corvey kept his word. Where is he? Look there. By the window. Dubriel tried to save his life by promising to help that man kill you. Dubriel offered to help Kobe kill me? Look closely, Dr. M. Remove the gray wig and the false beard. Beard? Yes. It's my Yes. Martin disguised as Kobe. Still alive, breathing. Get away from me, Evans. Don't touch me. I hate you. I hate you both. Why did you do this, Pierre? Why? I hated you, Bill, because you betrayed me on Devil's Island. I hated you, Evans, because you have got the things that I always wanted. Success, fame, glory. Well, I sent them into the coffin. The warning note. I knew you'd think it was Kobe. I've got you, Bill, but Kobe will get you, Evans. He's after you. He will get you. He will kill you. He will... Mother, mother. Dead. Yes, Dr. M. He is dead. You are quite safe now. You forget Kobe? No, Dr. M. I knew, even when I phoned you today, that it was not Kobe who sent the musical coffin. What? I knew it was not Kobe. It had to be Martin or Dubriel. Why didn't you stop them? Martin and Dubriel were both criminals plotting to kill you. If I'd stopped them, your life would have been in danger as long as they lived, hating you always for having attained the things that life denied them. But you forget, Shadow. Kobe may find me. Succeed where Martin fails. Never. I learned the whole history of all of you before I saw you. Yes? Everything, Dr. Evans. Your escape from Devil's Island after Dubriel's betrayal of Martin that resulted in the Hundred Lashes and his resolve for vengeance. And from the authorities of Devil's Island, I learned the truth about Kobe's last escape. Yes, I see now. I see now why he hated us. But what about Kobe? You are safe now, Dr. M. Safe from Kobe. The chain of logic is complete. Three months ago, a bleached skeleton was found on a deserted beach oh. in Trinidad. It has just been identified as the body of Kobe. Wow, that's some good detective work. Whoa. John Barclay! Good evening, friends. While you're doing your Christmas shopping, why not get a gift for your own home? I will. Something will not only make it a cheerier, happier place in which to live, but also make it easier to run. To my mind, the perfect gift for any home is a blue coal heat regulator. This marvelous thermostat provides the last word in comfort. For example, there's no running up and down stairs to open and close the mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The blue coal thermostat does that tiresome job automatically. Keep your home at just the temperature you want from morning till night. Mm -hmm. It can be attached to any kind of heating equipment. Steam, hot air, hot water, even a parlor heater. It will give you more uniform heat, more economical heat than you can get with the most expensive oil burner. Right. In fact, this blue coal heat regulator will completely modernize your present heating equipment. And yet it costs only $18.95 plus a small installation charge. Mm. You'll be amazed at the amount of fuel it saves you. So this Christmas, give your family the gift of a lifetime, a blue coal heat regulator. Mm. Your nearest blue coal dealer will be glad to give you complete information regarding it. Phone him tomorrow. Thank you, Ken Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. And friends, take Mr. Barclay's good advice. Make this Christmas a memorable one 
by having a blue cold heat regulator installed in your home. You'll save its small costs time and time again in fuel consumption. And you make your home a happier, healthier place in which to live. I feel like... So don't wait. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. If we don't buy any blue coal after this, you know, I feel like we're doing Mr. Barkley a disservice. Right. Time, may we remind you to mail your Christmas presents and cards early to secure delivery before December 24th. Mm. There will be no post office service on December 25th. I don't know why they do, people don't know that yet. I guess it was a new thing back in the day. Mm -mm. <laughs> Gotta buy that blue coal. Mm. Cold death. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, an event of unusual interest will be broadcast from this studio at the end of the program. Be sure to listen. And before today's exciting adventure with the shadow begins, I'd like to offer a suggestion for a home heating company. The next time you need fuel, order Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite. You don't have to get a full supply. The Blue Coal dealer will be glad to send you a trial cut. Use it, compare it with your regular fuel in every way. It's 10 to 1 you'll find blue coal gives you better heat mm -hmm. and less cost. Oh, yeah. Order blue coal by name. Phone your order to your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. Of course. Soon see the reason, Margot. Now 
entering Carver building. Good luck. Oh, dread. How awful. Look, Lamont, broken windows stop this too, please. I'm beginning to understand why you're here. But how did you hear about it? Daniel Carver, the man who owns this charming little mill village, is a fellow club member of mine. What are you going to do, Lamont? As Lamont Cranston or the Sheriff? As a nameless social worker for the present, Margot, I have a strong hunch the Shadow will have to play a big part if anything is to be done to help these people. Hmm. Here we are. Want some gas, mister? Uh, no, thanks, but could you tell me how to get to Mrs. Tucker's house? What do you want? Ah, Tucker's got enough trouble already, what with her old man and kid dying since Cole set in. I read about it in the papers. We've come here to help. Listen, mister. Carverville folks ain't got much. But we ain't asking or welcoming no nosing around from strangers. If you just point out Mrs. Tucker's house, I'll see what she has to say. Uh, right over there by the creek. But don't say I didn't warn you, mister. Thanks. Come along, Margo. I may need your help to get Mrs. Tucker's confidence. Well, I'll do anything. You know, Lamont, there's something terrifying about this village. How so? Well, that man and the way people are watching us from behind curtains and windows of every house along the street. I'm afraid of something, Margot. Of what? That's just what I hope to discover in this house. There's something sinister about this place. Wait, Margot, someone's coming to the door. What do you want, mister? Are you Mrs. Tucker? I'm Ma Tucker. What do you want? May we come in? You say what you've got to say. Please, yes. Mrs. Tucker, we've come to help you. No, you... Come in. It don't matter. Nothing matters now. Thank you. Mrs. Tucker, we realize you've been through a terrible ordeal. Losing your husband and son within a week. Well, I ain't no worse off than anybody else in Carverville. What are you going to do? I've got one boy left, Sam. He works in the mill. Mrs. Tucker, how much rent do you people have to pay for these houses? Hey, you better get out of here, mister. If you don't want to get me in more trouble for talking to you at all, you better get out. Who would make trouble for you because you... Talk to us. Never you mind that, mister. And if you know what's good for you, you'll get out of Carverville before Dawson and the others from Carverville get here. Hey, Ma, who are these folks? This is my son, Sam. Hello, Sam. Uh, howdy. You welfare workers from the city? You might call us that. Come here to investigate conditions. Well, they've been asking questions about the houses, Sam, and I didn't tell them nothing. Well, why didn't you, Ma? I'm sick of all this dear old man Carver and his spies. He's kept quiet for years. And what's it got us? What'd they get Pa and young Jim? They're slaves in the mill, and they rob us at Carver's store, and we live in these pigsties that Carver calls houses. And, and when we're old and sick, he lets us die off like a lot of mangy dogs. Shut up, Sam. Don't talk like that. Somebody is here. Well, let him hear. Sometimes somebody heard the truth. Can't you do something, mister? Can't you help us? Somebody don't help us. God only knows where this will end. Right? I knew there'd be trouble. Be quiet, Ma. Listen, mister, I got a notion you're all right. Come on, Tucker. Sam, open up. We're going to chase that smart out of you strangers out of town like we did that reporter. Listen, Sam, we'll have to leave or there'll be trouble. If you meet me in the next town in a couple of hours, I've got to know everything that's been going on here if I'm to help you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll meet you. Look for my car on Main Street. Come on, Margo, keep close to me. Oh, this is bad. I don't know if the shadow can help. Lamont, I hope no one saw Sam Tucker meet us down this road as you asked him to. I uh, hope not, Margo. What are you going to do now that we've told you the tragic story of Carverville? Going back to Carverville. Right now, tonight? Yes, first to call on old man Carver. I thought he was in the city. He evidently heard that more strangers were in Carverville this afternoon after he questioned him. Oh, how could such a beast Carver must be? If he could only be made to see the misery and suffering he's caused. He's going to see it, Margo, tonight. Lamont, there's Carverville. Oh, not that I'm afraid. We're but... stopping. That's Carver's house right over there. Yes, I see a light down the street. What are you going to do? Margot, do you remember Scrooge and Dickens' Christmas Carol? Oh. Carver's worse than Scrooge ever had. A nice Daniel Carver is going to feel more remorse than ever neither Scrooge ever did. He deserves it. I'll wait in the car. Please, of course. Those poor people down there in those flimsy houses can stand it, I can. I'll wait here. But how are you going to make Carver really go to poor people? Margo, tonight Daniel Carver is going on a sightseeing tour, personally conducted by the Shadow. <laughs>
While you are engaged in last-minute preparations for Christmas, don't neglect the health and comfort of your family. Be sure of a cozy, warm home during the holidays by ordering a supply of blue coal. No matter how cold or how mild the weather, blue coal is the most economical fuel for heating or cooking purposes. Up in the Arctic region, where the temperature today is at least 60 degrees below zero, fur traders and trappers are keeping warm with blue coal. Mm. They have used other fuels, only to find that blue coal will keep them warm more economically mm. than any other fuel. I see. Blue coal is a Pennsylvania hazard type, the fuel that burns long and steadily. It is a fuel that furnishes part of stoves and cooking ranges in New England were especially designed to burn. And the finest Pennsylvania hazard type is blue coal, mined by the Glen Alden Coal Company, employing American labor. Transported by American Railroad. Every carload is laboratory tested for purity and uniform size before shipment. Blue coal comes in all domestic sizes egg, stove, chestnut, and tea size. For economy's sake and for greatest comfort in cold weather, insist on blue coal. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer. You'll find his name listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory. Under the name Blue Coal. Albert, I told you there's any more trouble up here in Somerville. I'd fire you, didn't I? Yes. Well, there ain't been no trouble, Mr. Carter. Not yet. That guy that was here this afternoon from Crack tonight will make him wish he'd never heard of Carter. Well, what makes you think he will come back? I know he's coming back. Tonight. I've got Sam Tucker to meet him down in the next town. How do you know that? Of a host that he did when he came back about an hour ago. He wouldn't talk. He got enough out of him to know that that social worker is up to something. Well, I don't want any shooting and killing now. You just leave that fellow to me, Mr. Carter. You said you didn't want to be bothered with details. Well, what are you going to do, Dawson? Not much. Don't you worry. I like no law against a fellow being shot accidental. I like snooping around in the dark. You just leave the details to me. Come on, Dawson.
What are you going to make them do? Trying to hope so. I want to make sure that this Pegasus looks correct.
stop. Don't, don't torture me anymore. Burn them, build new ones, houses that are warm and comfortable and safe. 